While little girls in France are being taught that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance, little girls in Pakistan are being taught to behead anyone who makes fun of the most obvious false prophet in history. Ex-Muslims of North America shared a video of a Muslim girls' school in Pakistan where Muslim girls are learning how to respond to criticism the Islamic way. Let's check it out. We need to give credit where credit is due. Islam may not be good at producing countries where people actually want to live, or at promoting literacy and education, or at defending women's rights. But when it comes to cranking out songs that make people want to go out and slaughter people in the name of Allah, jihadis are the kings of rock. There is none higher. <laughs> Their lips are saying, decapitate, decapitate. But their hearts are saying, love, love. They call anyone who defends cartoons of Muhammad followers of Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab was one of Muhammad's uncles and one of his biggest critics. He knew that Muhammad was an imposter and a false prophet. So calling people followers of Abu Lahab isn't exactly an insult. It's strange, though, that they tell French leaders to come and face them like men. Do they really think that Emmanuel Macron is going to assemble an army and attack a girls' school in Pakistan? Be realistic, ladies. It's jihadis who target schools, not Frenchmen. Our blood is desperate to flow for the sake of our prophet. Muhammad, who had sex with a prepubescent girl, and produced a religion that has been promoting pedophilia for 14 centuries, now has a bunch of prepubescent girls saying how desperate they are for their blood to flow for him. How sick and twisted can a religion be? We will never stop until we exact revenge for your insult. Notice, it never occurs to anyone to step in and say, um, excuse me, do you really think we should be brainwashing little girls into dedicating their lives to slaughtering people over cartoons? Everyone seems to think this motivational speech is right on the money. But not to worry. If we keep telling ourselves that the only problem with Islam is a tiny minority of extremists, maybe we can avoid some of the violence until all the children who are being raised as jihadis grow up and slaughter our children and grandchildren in the name of Allah. The flames you spread to us in the East will now reach you in the West. The flames of cartoons that people put on the internet and thus reach people in Pakistan on Facebook and Twitter will now reach you in France and Austria. But the flames that reach the West won't be cartoons. The flames that reach the West will be jihadis slaughtering Christians in church and slaughtering random people out for a meal. Once again, we see that Islam has a perfectly functioning moral compass. <laughs> 
She's talking about Muslim girls shedding their blood to avenge cartoons. Here again, it doesn't occur to anyone to step in and say, excuse me again, I may be new here, but should we really be brainwashing little girls into going out and getting themselves killed over some cartoons? Everyone at the school and all the parents seem to think that this is perfectly normal. Why? Because it is in Islam. Your peace is tied to ours. What does that mean? It means if you don't want us waging terrorist attacks against basically any European we come across, you had better silence critics of Islam. You need to make criticizing or mocking Islam illegal in Western countries that aren't under Sharia. You need to enforce Sharia blasphemy laws even in the West, or we're coming to kill you until you get so sick of dying that you'll do anything to appease us. You know what the saddest part here is? The saddest part is that Western nations could help these girls. And I don't mean by conquering Pakistan. I mean that these girls will eventually encounter a lot of Western culture through the internet. We could help them by showing them that their goal in life shouldn't be to shed their blood for the most obvious false prophet in history. But instead of these girls encountering a unified voice, telling them that they shouldn't be letting an illiterate 7th century Arabian caravan robber tell them how to live their lives, they'll encounter Western politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers telling them that Islam is a wonderful religion and that Muhammad was a wonderful man, indeed, a true prophet. And all this will do is reinforce what their teachers have been telling them all their lives. Schools in Pakistan are brainwashing little girls and preparing them to martyr themselves for a fake prophet. We respond by praising and honoring the religion that promotes the brainwashing and the martyrdom. We respond to stupidity and insanity with more stupidity and insanity. The response of the West so far has been an epic failure, so why don't we try something new? How about we respond to stupidity and insanity with a relentless presentation of the facts that prove conclusively that Muhammad was a false prophet? We might hurt a lot of feelings, but we'll definitely save a lot of lives.